again for having us and letting us uh, uh, take part in this. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say um, thank you to my son-in-law. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the drum um, for being here, the singers, and all the dancers. I am Navajo. My late husband was Pawnee and Crow. Our grandchildren are um, also Lakota, Southern Cheyenne, Cree, Southern Ute, Ute Mountain Ute, and like my uh, son in law said, he's Meskwaki. So we have many tribes in our family. We also have our good friends here. They are from the Southern Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes, as well as the Seminole. So many nations are represented here, and um, I'd like to welcome all of you once again, and we appreciate your presence. And um, hopefully, you know, you learn something, and we learn something from you. Um, just we appreciate your your being here, um, and let's just enjoy this beautiful afternoon together. We've been blessed by the clouds. Um, the temperature has gone down, so we appreciate that. Um, we have some people, other dancers that usually come with come, but they. Um, are not feeling well or they're traveling um some are in mourning so we um we just want to remember them today as well so we'd like to start this off with um a flag song and any event that you attend in the united states they always sing the national anthem and this is comparable to that so the singers will sing one from the from the Pawnee, Pawnee Nation, and um, they also were, many of them, um, they traveled through here as well, so we acknowledge their presence, and also, as I mentioned, my husband, my late husband was Pawnee, so. If you could all stand, please. into this circle here and um, we um, this I guess originated maybe late 1800s or so I'm not sure but when they used to 
They used to take um, Native Americans to Europe and they used to display them, you know, look at all these people that live over across the ocean. And so they would come in into like in a, in a parade and um, our people, you know, were look, looked upon, I don't know, maybe in awe or something, I'm not sure, uh, but we carry that to this day, I don't know. I don't know how that was adopted, but um, also maybe from the rodeo circuit, you know, when all the horses come in and the, 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 the singer, I mean, the uh, riders come in, all the participants, it's kind of like that, but we want the, our children, our grandchildren to enter this circle as a blessing to this, to this event. And um, these are, uh, beautiful dances and they have lots of different you know meanings and significance um, and I'll explain all of that um, as we go along but we're going to ask the singer to sing an appropriate song to bring the dancers in. Watch out, sissy, watch out. <laughs> she lives on the edge. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zach, 
and I come from the Navajo tribe. Uh, at first, we're going to have uh, Harmony Iron come on out. Uh, she represents the Southern Claw style. This is a dance that comes out of Oklahoma. It is a it's a woman's dance, and it uh, showcases her uh, blessing of Mother Earth. Uh, the song we sing, uh, there's downbeats in it, and she bows, and it's a very graceful dance, and it's she bows in honor of Mother Earth. Um, she's wearing what we call a tea dress, and it's just uh, in the big shape of a T, the arms and the dress is one big uh, blouse. She also is carrying a purse. Uh, she has fully beaded moccasins, uh, a shawl, and a drop cloth in the back, as well as hair ties and earrings. <laughs> Harmony comes all the way from Onion Lake, Saskatchewan. She is... <clears throat> Let's say she is nine years old now. Um, she'll be heading back up to Canada here very shortly. She's uh, here to do this presentation and participate in a powwow coming up. And then she's heading back up to Canada. So. We're very honored that she's here today with us. Okay, and we would like to invite any elders that might need a chair. There is some extra chairs sitting up here by our dancers down at the end. So any elders that might need a chair, please uh, do so. Thank you very much, Harmony. All right, 
Next, we would like to invite our jingle dress dancers, our women's jingle dress. This dance comes uh, from the Ojibwe people, and this is a healing dance. The story uh, we were told about this dance is that a grandfather a long time ago had a granddaughter who was very sick, and she was near, near death, and he had a dream and was instructed to make this style of dress. And the, what the dress represents is the sound of rain. So when rain comes and rain washes away things, it, it brings life. So that's the style of this dress that it represents. And, um, and in the story, he, he made this dress and they gathered all the people like you guys are here today. And at first he had to start uh, walking her around. And by the time they made a full circle around, uh, she had, was able to dance on her own. So they say that this is a healing dress. Um, a lot of times at powwows, they ask the women's jingle dress dancers to come on out first and bless the grounds because of the, the beautiful sounds it makes. And the dresses a long time ago had a jingle that represented every day of the year. So you can imagine um, in the olden times, the dresses got pretty heavy. But this style, uh, it's, it's very graceful as well. There's a lot of, not a lot of movement up top. Uh, it's, it's all about their footwork and everything. And as you can see, Jayla and Amaya and, and Aspen, baby Aspen here, uh, they have fully beaded moccasins and leggings. They're also carrying a purse. Uh, Aspen here has, is carrying a fan and they all have their beautiful accessories here that Jayla here, uh, she makes a lot. And these girls here, Maya and Jayla, are very talented artists. Uh, Maya is a, should we call her the Bob Ross of our family? She's a, a very wonderful painter. And Jayla here with her beadwork, she is an amazing artist. She did all her own beadwork that she's wearing today. And her beadwork actually represents uh, her Cheyenne side and she has uh, the turtle design on there and we call this uh, this land here Turtle Island so that's what a lot of that represents <laughs> yes uh, Jayla also beaded Amaya's moccasins and Harmony's moccasins and I maybe not those ones but uh, we're going to go ahead and sing two styles of song for them. The first one is just a normal straight song. And then the second one has a little different style of beat. It is called a sidestep. And you'll notice the difference in uh, each style of song.
All right, thank you very much, ladies. One more. Give them a quick breather. Uh, they call a lot of these styles Indian aerobics, so if you guys are ever looking for a great workout program, uh, there's a couple of styles that we dance that are uh, very challenging. Very. Uh, the young man over here dancing fancy, we'll explain more about him, but he's our showstopper. That is the fastest style we have. And these women dancing on their toes the entire time. That is very uh, hard on your legs. So This next song we're going to sing is a side step. You'll notice there's a little different beat. And um, their footwork is more of just stepping to the left. Okay, next we're going to invite Chabon out here. He is our men's fancy feather dancer. During the Wild West shows uh, of Wild Bill Cody, they, uh, I believe I got his name right, they uh, had a, they wanted things to be flashier. They wanted a, uh, so they started this style here, and it was the young men who said, hey, you know, I can I can show up these old guys. And uh, so they started dancing these styles that show off their athletic prowess. And he he's wearing two eagle feathers on his back as well as uh, side bustles. And he's uh, he has two uh, eagle feathers on top of his, what, he's, what we call a roach. And those are those come from the tail feathers of a golden eagle. Um, you can tell because of the black and whites. Uh, what the roach represents that he's wearing is the sun rays at uh, either sunrise or sunset. You know, sometimes when it's right on the horizon, you can see those long rays that shoot out, and those that's what that represents. Uh, we hold the eagle feathers in high regard because they say uh, they they fly closest to God. They uh, they carry our prayers up to Him. Uh, as far as uh, what also Chabon has is his arm bustles, and he's wearing angoras and bells, also just to kind of keep time with the drum. So we're gonna uh, sing. How many songs do you want, man? Do you want a ruffle? Do you want straight? You want both? Straight. straight song? Okay. Two. We're going to sing a straight song for him and do a ruffle. No, just too straight. Too straight. <laughs> 
<laughs> Crow hop. <laughs> compete against each other uh, they compete against the drum um, they got to know all these different songs there's very many different songs every tribe has their own songs their own ceremony songs family songs women songs prayer songs you know and as a singer um, sometimes you're called upon to sing special songs and uh, you got you got to know what you're doing. There's there's protocols at this drum here. Uh, we hold this drum in high regards. Uh, it what it represents to us is the earth beat, uh, the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And amongst the southern tribes, uh, like my tribes and stuff, they, we don't allow women at the drum. Um, they they're allowed to sing behind us, but because they have that ability to create heartbeats within themselves, and by that I mean create life. Um, we don't allow them to, but amongst some of the northern tribes, they do allow their women to sit at the drum. And we are going to sing one more song. Uh, we're going to ruffle it up for this man. It's a, another style of fancy dance song. Uh, let's give him, let's cheer him on and encourage him a little bit. It takes a lot of courage to dance in front of everyone, especially by yourself at a Spin young around. age. So. We never tell our children no uh, when it comes to singing and dancing. Sometimes they're up here throwing us off and things, but we don't. They're learning, so we don't. We don't try to discourage them in any way. So, Javana, thank you for being out here today, and let's give them a show, man.
<laughs> these uh, the style of dance here. There's a. Uh, it's not only you know we we try to trick them as singers too. Uh, this. Like I said, you gotta be in very good shape to dance this. We, we have what we call Iron Man competitions. So these fancy dancers will go songs back to back to back to back till there's one one left standing. And my nephew, um, when he was maybe about 10, 11 years old, he's not here today, but uh, he won one of these competitions and he danced against all the adults, all the fancy dancers that were here at a big powwow uh, called the Denver March powwow that they have every year in uh, Denver, Colorado at the Coliseum. And he probably danced maybe 17 songs in a row, back to back, and he won the whole competition. He was just, just a little guy and he beat everybody, so we were very proud of him that day. But uh, Jacoby, thank you for showing, showcasing your style. Next, we are going to invite uh, my niece out here, Misty Rose Iron. Misty Rose is <clears throat> somewhat famous amongst us uh, Indian folk. She is one of our very uh, few female male prairie chicken dancers. So she uh, comes from the Cree people up in... Onion Lake, Saskatchewan, and her grandfather is a very famous chicken dancer, and he uh, was gave Rosie the right to dance this style, so she has been going viral uh, all over the internet uh, because she showcased the style. She's even beating out the little boys now in their own style, so today she's actually showcasing uh, men's traditional and uh, what she is wearing is, you know, roach with bald eagle feathers on top. She's carrying a staff and an otter hoop there. She uh, also is wearing a eagle feather bustle. And the staff she's carrying also has feathers at the top. Uh, sometimes that was called acoustic. And uh, counting coup on somebody was... Uh, very, it was a, a, sh to a show of bravery for the warriors. Um, you would go and touch your enemy instead of killing them. So you would go and hit them with their staff, with the staff, and then you know, basically saying, "I took pity on you. I could have, I could have killed you, but I count a coup on you." And you didn't want this to happen to you. If if you were dishonored in this way, you'd be pretty much excommunicated from the tribe, or until you proved yourself in battle again. But uh. Rosie is Rosie is five years old, and she's just getting ready to start school, so we're pretty excited for her. And she's gonna be okay. So we're gonna sing two songs for her. The first one we're gonna sing just a quick straight song, so she can showcase the style and the second one is what we call a duck and dive and this style um the song represents the the native warriors uh charging the cavalry and in the song you'll notice we'll hit the drum on certain times and she'll duck so what that represents is when the cavalry was shooting their cannons at us you know you don't you don't take step backwards it's a sign of retreat so you just keep charging forward and you, you dodge bullets, you dodge, you know, enemy fire. So that's what that's, uh, it was a war dance. So that's, that's what that song is going to represent. So we're going to go ahead and sing for Misty Rose here.
Rosi. I'm gonna give her a chance to catch her breath, even though we know she's not tired. Girl has energy for days. <clears throat> All right, next we're going to invite all our dancers out and to showcase what we call an inner tribal. That is uh, just a social dance. Um, on the, a lot of, uh, usually every weekend, I would say, throughout the country, there is a powwow going on somewhere. And the powwow is just a Native American social gathering, you know, a way to relax and uh, compete, sing, dance, um, you know, just have a good time. You know, we have vendors and food that are at these uh, events and they are alcohol and drug free. You know, that is a, uh, alcohol has been a crutch for our people for a while. And so we don't promote that uh, amongst our, at our powwows. But this is a social dance, so uh, we invite you spectators to come on out and uh, join our dancers. If there was a style that you enjoyed that you would like to try, come on out and the dancers will show you how.
Okay, next we're gonna invite the spectators back out and um, our dance, call our dancers back out and do what we call a not social dance, uh, a round dance. So this is a very simple dance. We're just gonna ask you to form a, a large circle and our dancers will lead you. It's a simple side step to the left. So, dancers, whenever you're ready, come on out and lead them out in a round dance.
like to thank everyone for your participation. I want to give a big shout out to our singers here. They have to sing every song for every dancer, so they um, have a lot that we uh, require of them and that we request of them, so please give them a hand. Thank you, everyone. I think we passed our time limit here, so we want to thank you all again for being here. Uh, we're going to close out our um, our part of this event with uh, a blessing for all of you uh, with this closing.